Hello, and welcome to another edition of In the Business With, being brought to you by Cranes 101, the future of safety training, and Cranes Aerial Truck Service, the gold standard for heavy equipment inspections. Today, we're in New Haven, Connecticut, and we're going to be visiting with the movers and shakers at Signlight, uh, one of the most formidable sign companies in Connecticut. So let's take a walk inside and meet with the people. Well, we're here with Elaine DiTullio, the matriarch of Signlight, and uh, I wanted to find out a little bit about their early history, and uh, Elaine can certainly uh, can certainly opine on that. So, Elaine, tell me, how did Signlight get started? When did it get started? Signlight got started about 53 years ago, and uh, John and I were kids, 25, 23. When we found it, we told our parents, they had a heart attack. <laughs> no, no, you have jobs, you have jobs. And I said, no. I said, let's give it a shot. He's young, and he could always find a job, but we'll have regrets. So uh, we did. And uh, he met a friend uh, at another uh, facility he was working at, and that friend had a lot of connections, and they joined together. And they had a... Um, they had a very successful start, and then eventually, and then eventually, uh, they started 100% of the business 52 years ago. 53, and if we're doing something right, it's going on the third generation. And when we finally got off the ground, we were on a shoestring, and I was at home typing invoices on a Smith Corona. And I didn't type, so we could see how that worked out. But nevertheless, we went along and we went along, and uh, and here we are today. And uh, and my sons and I, and the founder John, uh, we all work together. We work well, and uh, and my grandsons, uh, they are learning uh, as we speak. So it's on my third generation, and uh, I have great pride in this place. I really do. Hi. Well, uh, Elaine, did you find early on, um, like I did when I started my business, that mine's only 20 years old, so I'm a baby compared to you, uh, that um, you got advice from family members not to go into business because, uh, you know, you're certainly going to fail and who's going to pay for your health insurance and all of those stories? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and. Um as I said, my parents were really uh, upset. John's parents were upset because, you know, the old attitude is you work for the same company forever and you retire. But as I said, uh, both of us as kids, uh, and uh, I was having a baby and we just bought a new house. So to add to it all, uh, we went ahead and took the chance. And. Uh, and I'm very grateful for that opportunity. Well, it's certainly a big chance, there's no doubt about that. But looking at your business from the outside in, um, I would say that the chance was well worth it. Uh, it, it appeared to be a very successful business, um, and uh, I'm proud to have a relationship with you. You've been um, doing business with us at Cranes 101 and Cranes Aerial Truck Service for over a decade. Um, and that's something we're, we're very happy about as well. Um, how did you, uh, how do you feel that you've fared through uh, this pandemic now that we're at the end of 2020 and we certainly don't want to look back on it, but how did you fare through that? I mean, that's a success story in itself, just being in business still today. Um, what challenges did, were, you, were you facing? Well, we were facing the challenges like everybody else. Uh, we had a crew, a skeleton crew, uh, and we were fair about it. Uh, and you'll talk to my son, Mark, and he, he's uh, very, very good at what he, They all are. We're all good at what we do. And the reason being, the success that we have is, and I could speak with no doubt, and a lot of people, they do what they have to do. Yeah. When they have to do it, 
They use the best products they can. We don't cut corners. We don't use inexpensive vinyl. We use top quality. We stand behind our product. And we also help people in any way that we can. And sometimes they um, have ideas that we don't think are, I should say, because uh, I'm in here. <laughs> I'm, I'm the navigator. <laughs> and they are the, the people that really get the job. And, uh, and they really do what they say they're going to do, on time, no promises broke, and that's our success, our reputation. We don't have salespeople. No salespeople, ever. Really? Word of mouth. We have wonderful accounts. We're very proud. What else can I say? Well, I think that well wraps it up. I mean, that's the sign of success. Pardon my pun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, let us uh, go and talk to Mark. Uh, I, I know that he can give us the nuts and bolts of what's going on in sign light today. So uh, we're, our next stop is to go see Mark. And, okay. Uh, we'll, uh, All right. We'll... Terrific. We're upstairs now at uh, Sign Light in their uh, conference room. I'm here with uh, Mark, and uh, we're going to get some of the nuts and bolts of Sign Light, um, how they operate and how they've um, successfully uh, managed to get their way through the pandemic so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, uh, this edition is uh, the uh, uh, can't wait to get through 2020 <laughs> edition, so it's going to be uh, uh, out in our pub, uh, publishment in um, January. At any rate, Mark, tell me, what's your position with Sign Light? Started in 1991 here, full time after college. But prior to that, I was a teenager coming to work as a kid, do whatever, you know, go on the road with the guys, dig holes, whatever I had to do then. And in this industry, I feel you have to learn the nuts and bolts of it. So from that day on, 15 years in the shop, building, fabricating, installing, watching how custom signs are built, that was key. To answer your question, what I do now, everything from sales calls, meeting new customers, after the job is sold, watching it through the shop, getting it through production, going through each department with it, um, project management, a small family-owned company, um, you handle all the nuts and bolts of it. I pass it along to our craftsmen who are amazing and our installers that are the top shelf but it starts with as we sell it and design it and come with the right way to build it that's how it leaves a shop with no issues and uh that's how that's how my role here is as, at the company yeah. now after talking with elaine and now and yourself um you both seem to put a lot of stock into the people who work here um you feel that that's a very important uh, facet of your business, huh? Yeah, absolutely. A custom sign shop, we could sell and we could promote and we could have so many different layers of what we think is fancy and, and to the public, but without the guys that we have in the shop, the fabricators, the craftsmen, the painters, the installers, the designers, the art, so many layers, and these guys are amazing. Once we sell something, no matter how intricate, tricky, or custom it is, I never have, we never have a doubt that the end user, our client, is going to love it. And just stand back and get phone calls and emails that exceeded their expectations. Your men were amazing on the job. I didn't expect it to be this beautiful. Thank you so much. So those are the things. I relay those to the guys every chance we have because without those guys, you can only be so good. And uh, so, yeah, we're proud of them. We've got a good team here. Now, Sign Light is not just a sign maker. Um, I mean, I understand you make sign, signs from the ground up. But you're also a sign installer. Mm -hmm. That requires some heavy equipment. What, what do you use to install a sign and what, uh, what procedure? What, what yeah, we, as we've gotten into some very high-end signage. Um, lately, right now we're doing a project in Waterbury that we had to bring an excavation company. We have a 56-yard core of cement going in the ground, rebar cages that we help design, engineered stamp, and bring in cement trucks. and. We're going to bring an outside crane company, probably Bay Crane. Um, some of the heights and the weights exceed the equipment we have. So we bring in heavy-duty crane companies to lift up some of the signs that, that our equipment can't handle. 
Uh, a lot of excavation companies come in for the heavy digging, and uh, we have bobcats, we have our own cranes, but they're bringing in, they're digging two size Olympic swimming pools almost for this footing for a high rise BMW sign in Waterbury. So that, that project comes to mind as you ask the question. So, yeah, we do outsource um, some of the work, 90% of it, we have the equipment and the capacity to handle ourselves, but we do have to outsource crane. Matter of fact, we're on a project today in Norwalk installing a 20 foot tall uh, fabricated seal for Norwalk Aquarium. It's a curved architectural piece, halo lit LED lighting, and the reach is too far for our equipment. We had to get a 125 foot um, crane truck that can lift and exceed and get to the park of the building. That's happening today in Norwalk, Connecticut. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you, you guys are very artistic, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. It's you get a lot of sign companies. You know, do cookie cutter work, and that's fine. But yeah, we, we're leaned on by some high end graphic designers, architects. And, and overall sculptures even that uh, come to our shop with a hand-drawn concept on paper. We start playing around with it, we'll make a mock-up, we'll make some pieces, some, some drawings and some ideas, and it starts to take shape and evolve into a concept that someone had on, on a just doodling around and we can turn it into, we've turned it into 75 foot tall architectural pieces. It just started out as a concept on a napkin. Pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's really cool. Um, and and uh, Signlight is truly a family business. You have three generations working here, huh? Absolutely. Father founded it in 66 with some partners and uh, got to the next level in the mid 80s with my brother, my mother, who was a housewife growing up, came into the business as we got older. And now my son, Nicholas, my nephew John, uh, third generation, yeah. uh, one's 20 years old, one's 18. Um, had the, had the plans to go to college and so forth, and my son did a semester, and said, yeah, I like, oh, this, oh, I like what we do, I like the guys, I like the idea of coming into work and, and seeing it. I said, oh, it works for us, and my brother, and our second generation, and uh, now it's a third generation, and uh, the guys love working with our sons, they know the concept. You're not treated any differently. If you're working as hard, if not harder than the next guy. Rain, shine, there's no favoritism, there's none of that. My father was old school with us, and it paid off because you have to have the guys respect, you have to have the knowledge, you can't just walk in and because you have a certain last name, be leveled up quickly, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, a lot of businesses suffered through this pandemic mm -hmm. um, one way or another, and I know that the sign business wasn't insulated from that either. Correct. What did you do to make, um, uh, make your way through this pandemic? Uh, uh, being here today, in and of itself is a success story. Um, so what did, what did you find that you had to do to survive uh, so far mm -hmm. in this pandemic? Well, in March, when the government shut down non-essential businesses, we didn't know. Sign company, essential, non-essential, I don't know what it is. But then we got a little more information about construction companies are considered essential. Manufacturers are essential. We're, uh, essential. We're both of those. So we had work on the books. We had customers still asking so I reached out my brother reached out to our customers and said want to continue building your signs and get them installed most of them said yes we brought back uh, we furloughed the men immediately we didn't know and we brought them back slowly and March that was March April was quiet but we kept trudging forward with the work we had and the guys were all you know went back to work sitting around and, and worrying about this is no fun let's work safely with our masks and take our time to answer your question for each other a lot of communication um, we phone still kept ringing, customers were still placing orders, and we kept putting work out the door. A little less um, volume, but it was still there, and started escalating some more. And right now, October, November, December are busiest months of the year, and we're ahead of last year on those three months alone, so that's nice. Yeah. But there was an ebbs and flows. There was busy, and it's a little slower, busy, a little slower. Um, at one point, we had to put, so we didn't lay anybody off. We had to put the guys on instead of 40 hours with some overtime. Put them on 32 hours or 24. And there's a work share program with the state where they can collect a little bit of the difference in their paycheck from the state uh, stipend paycheck. So the guys all understood, um, and we're thankful that we're remaining this busy in such brutal times because it could have been worse, I think. Oh, uh, much worse. Yeah. I mean, it just driving down here, we're looking at. Uh, empty buildings. There's a lot of places have gone out of business, and uh, it is truly yeah. a success story. Thank um, you. We did have 
you did have a big project planned for this year, a high-end um, retail um, uh, program going up, but we started to work last year, and they put their brakes on the entire project. It's going to be a big one in 2020, and I feel bad for them, not us, but the construction team, the people building the property. It's half started, and it's a ghost town now. They're, they're completely affected by it. Uh, yeah, they, they got hit hard. That was going to be our biggest project in 2020. We're handling all the retail into this self signage, all the tenant signage. So that went that went on hold. Hopefully, it comes back with 2021. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, uh, this, this pandemic has certainly made us do business in a different way, hasn't it? You're not kidding. You're not kidding. Yeah, but we all learned something from it. I'll tell you that much. Yes, and you know, and. Um, we, uh, the, the Sturm family, that, that's uh, Cranes 101 and Cranes Aerial Truck Service, uh, feel that we are truly blessed by having companies like Signlight who've been doing business with us for over a decade. Yeah, yeah. Brought a lot, you, and you've given us a lot of help, a lot of knowledge, a lot of insight. We want to stay on the right side of the regulations and the understanding of them. Sometimes they can be a little vague and a little hard to understand, and you hate to find out you read it wrong and you, 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 you thought you were following the letter of the law and that's how we like to operate our any kind of business. So uh, you've been a good good asset to us and a lot of help. And I know Elaine has leaned on you many times nervously, like what's going on? You're in three <laughs> yes. different stories. Tell me which one I want to believe. I don't know. It's, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, we get that all the time. Yeah, all right. Well, we're not the only ones that, that's no, no. baffling from time to time. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's uh, safety is our only business, yeah. and uh, yeah. I don't think we could handle anything else. Yeah. To be honest with you, <laughs> like you think on so much. Yeah, you got a tiger by the tail. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Mark, listen, I, I appreciate you spending this time with us, um, um, and I'm, I'm very happy that you're doing well. I can see by um, the looks. I mean, you get a, a very large facility here, um, which is. A, Part of that success story, I'm, I'm uh, very happy to see. Thank you, appreciate um, it. So again, I, I thank you for your time. Thanks, Jeff. And um, let's go back to work. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you. All right.